Hi there everyone, I wanted to do a video on how I created materials for this sci-fi console thing in here. It's just a piece which I did for my uh, personal portfolio thing uh, in Unreal Engine. So I created this scene uh, recently in Unreal Engine and uh, created uh, some assets and this console asset is one of them. And it's just a concept design that I want to sort of practice and become better as a designer for this type of uh, props or uh, environment things. So, so yeah, I've been doing more and more stuff in Substance Painter these days. Of course, like uh, doing stuff in here is really good because you can use Substance Designer materials here and these programs really work so well together. So you're going to be able to bring out your substances here as a materials and then create masks and do stuff with those so uh, it's pretty pretty exciting stuff and I'd like to show you a couple of uh, new tricks that are, are possible to do here in Substance Painter nowadays so um, let's uh, take a look so this model is based on high poly which I created in Blender and also in ZBrush I did some uh, additional pieces in ZBrush and so um, so I baked the normals from this high poly and uh, I didn't, uh, well I baked only parts of them because you know um, I created then these uh, handrails and these tubes which um, I really don't need to do any baking because uh, what I have here is just uh, basically a smooth curve and then I have uh, some of these harder pages which have uh, just the basic uh, custom uh, uh, smoothing groups splits uh, so that you have like a uh, this area here is uh, smooth and then I have like split on the edge so it was really easy I didn't have to do baking and and and, and anyway so our only part which I baked was uh, this body this um, if I'm just gonna go in here and uh, hide this so actually this is the only part which I baked and I did the baking in Substance Painter so um, it's really it works so beautiful I didn't have to do any I don't think I actually even did a custom cage for this so I just used the uh, the basic settings in Substance um, Painter and it just worked beautifully. So uh, yeah, uh, so let's jump into the Painter here. So the material it turned out pretty okay. Um, I have a bunch of different uh, uh, materials here. I have this paint material and then I have this uh, shiny metal which is kind of uh, coming through that I have like the the idea is that the paint is scratched away and at some points and then I have a plastic for these uh, keys here and then I have this uh, emissive material for those LEDs and uh, also the screen so yeah it's nothing really special but it was pretty fun to put this together and also to use the new tools that we have in your Substance Painter so um, let's dive in so I have my layers here and um, the way how you, I like to start uh, the sort of design process is that I sort of create these height details in here. So, so I just basically uh, ignore every other layer and, and just um, what I like to do is sort of uh, look at the service and kind of think of what does it need that what kind of details are going to be the most important thing and and what that really what that really means is that normally I'm just like to get in there and add some uh, some kind of a grooves like uh, some kind of vents in here that you know maybe there's some kind of like a, a ventilation holes or some kind of speaker holes in here and something like that and then I have also these um, these panel lines in here so um, let's take a look what I did I um, started with uh, actually I think uh, this was actually the sticker uh, this was something that I did later but I just put it into the stack so so yeah, uh, we can actually maybe hide those and see that what what's, what's everything. Uh, so I have this sticker um, here and then I, I just put like a little bit of uh, height information so, so that it looks like it's actually something that it's been sticked there. Then I have this normal detail and this is actually um, based on normal map. So, so here you have these um, hard surfaces which uh, come included in Substance Painter. So it's really fun way to do with this is that you just uh, pick some of these like uh, if I say that I want to put like something like uh, some kind of a panel here I'm just gonna be able to get in here and maybe uh, in, uh, enable the normal and then I'm gonna be able to drag like for example this one here and now I have I'm just gonna uh, disable my alpha so that I have just like the I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna stick 
you know, things like that. And this is just a absolutely brilliant way to uh, add detail. It's never been this easy that I'm going to be able to just get in here. I'm going to be able to use also symmetry. Um, I can maybe go and uh, do like uh, maybe Z and I'm going to be able to do stuff like that really easily. So uh, I'm actually in the process of looking at how could I uh, do my own because it would be nice if I could be able to create my own normal uh, hard surface, normal map stamps. Um, currently, um, we can actually do our own, but the problem is that if we rotate them, um, they are not going to update. So these are cool because if we even if we rotate them, they are going to still work fine. That if I'm going to take, like, for example, um, let's say uh, this one, and uh, I can go in here and um, do like an angle jitter. So now it means that every time I click, it's going to be uh, like <laughs> another angle and if we, we take a look at these actually are properly aligned because you can't actually rotate normal maps because of the the way how um normal maps are, are done is that that if you take a look at this actually work um uh, th these respect the uh, light correctly so these actually render render out just fine so um i'm not having like super resolution here i um use uh two, 2k maps and then um uh, when I export, I just uh, export as 4K, so it's a really nice way to to save video memory because you know it, uh, Substance Painter can be quite demanding on your video hardware, so that's why you know it doesn't look that good. But anyway, these uh, normal map stamps are really cool because they really respect. Uh, you can use these and you can rotate them, and they just always uh, uh, correctly uh, are, are placed correctly to your uh, uh, layer so yeah absolutely so i did uh, i just use uh, actually some of these and then rotate and turned and um, move them around and and added some of these uh, by doing that and then also the panel lines um, i think i used normal for this one because um, i tried to use the height but but uh, i was uh, having a little bit of issue with my uv layout here because um, when you're doing stuff like that I really noticed that it would be really good to have uh, UVs such as these straight so that we don't have any um, any sort of angle here because when you have the angle then we run into a, a, a situation where we need to do this anti-aliasing and then that can actually create this sort of uh, artifact so something just to bear in mind that if you are um, running low on texture space like uh, like in, in this case it I, I should have probably uh, mirror some of these areas such as for example these tubes I would have a safe lot of space if I had mirrored them or, or at least these parts but anyway something just bear in mind that um, if you are doing any kind of panel lines if you're planning to put some panel lines then by all means make sure that your UVs are not uh, in any angle that they are just straight horizontally or vertically aligned so that you can you will be able to to just uh, stamp uh, a direct line in here but also one way to do the panel lines is that you can just uh, use for example um, we could use these um, uh, stamps here so we could actually just uh, grab some uh, I think we had like this, actually this line I think I used this line actually that I was going to be able to grab this one and then uh, I just basically I have this still the angle jitter on so I'm just going to uh, turn that down so I just basically was able to just stamp these guys down like that uh, getting here and um, and like that so it's it's pretty easy um, it took a little effort to, to align them the other way is to you can all also use the uh, just normal alphas and I actually created some of those uh, by myself uh, I think I, this P line is something that I did here so um, I'm gonna be able to maybe um, we could try to put this one in here. I'm just going to go and uh, um, maybe it's easier if I'm just going to do another layer in here. Um, I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm going to just do height so we're going to be able to see that. So you can, uh, I have this alpha here and now I can set the height. So if I want to like push down, I can uh, just move this down and, and do like that and uh, maybe do another angle here something like um, something like that could work so I'm gonna be able to to get in here and uh, 
it's a little tricky to get it aligned, but yeah, I'll make it a little longer. And you could also, again, uh, adjust the, uh, yeah, something like that. Also, other way to do is that if you uh, want to sort of uh, adjust the height or adjust the depth later, you're going to be able to uh, to get in here and uh, maybe create like a fill layer and then put a uh, height information to that fill layer and then create a mask for that. So in that that case, it's going to be able to we're going to be able to um, change that later. So we're going to be able to uh, adjust the height of those details later, which is super uh, non-destructive. So yeah. Uh, so I yeah I graded those and then also yeah these fasteners which were just normal details, and then we have this anchor mark in here and this is something that came later to Substance Painter and there's actually a really cool video of uh, Allegorithmic and I'm gonna link to that so so it really explains well how to how to use this so the the idea of these anchors is that after you have baked your uh, maps your um, normal maps, your word space, uh, normals, ambient occlusion, curvature, and things like that. And then you're using, um, say, these uh, um, filters, these um, uh, generators, mask generators here, to drive your weathering effects, things like that. So when you're using the anchors, you're going to be able to, to add details later, and then these uh, generators are going to take that into account take your height details into account th those that you have added later after your baked operations so so these anchors really allow us to to add detail and then make sure that our uh, generators will uh, will take that into account so um i've just uh, added the height details into this um, uh, envelope in here this uh, folder in here and now if i'm going to go to for example I'm just going to turn on some of these and and uh, get like what I did here is just a basic uh, basic material like a steel uh, to to put so that basically there's a steel and then there's going to be some kind of a paint on top of that. So uh, so yeah, so I have like this metal edges thing here. So what this is is I've just created a, a fill layer uh, and added this basic material, which is actually something that came with a substance painter so um i just picked one of them uh, this steel rough in here and then what i did was that i just uh, used this mg metal edgeware which is one of the default uh, generators mask generators so generators are always uh, producing a black and white re uh, result which is applied to to a mask so so that's something to keep in mind it's a little different from from filters so yeah uh, what what this is is that it just takes um, some things to account. For example, um, ambient occlusion. Um, I think it, this one is actually what I'm driving here. Is that uh, I'm actually using more like the curvature and and then uh, about those angles which I mentioned, we can see that um, we have like a micro detail here, you know, like micro normal. And um, when you come in here, you can see that uh, I'm gonna actually maybe yeah so. When you come here, you can see how resources here. You can do a micro detail using like some of these uh, crunch maps, some of these procedural textures, but you can also use then reference those anchors, which I did. So I'm referencing the normal detail in here. And this is something that is a little tri tricky to, to, to get working at first time. So what you have to do is you have to select that anchor detail in here, and then you have to, to remember to change this reference channel. So if you're using normal details, then you have to change that reference channel to normal in order to work and and so on. And then uh, you can uh, do some little uh, adjustments here. And then you have uh, uh, other other things. Also, um, here you need to go and uh, micro details and you have to turn this one on, otherwise it doesn't work. So it's a, yeah, something that um, just to bear in mind, it takes a little adjusting to do to, to get it working. So um, what I did was then able to to get those details uh, working here. So I'm just gonna turn those guys on so that we can see this. So now uh, our uh, uh, metal edgeware is respecting these uh, little holes in here and also those edges here. So yeah, uh, it's coming along pretty well. What I then did is that I used a hand paint to sort of obscure that effect because without this is kind of um, it's not that I wanted to sort of uh, do something a little bit um, 
something that looks like more organic so so I went here and um, I like to use some of these alphas for this so I like to use for example sandpaper and we can see we have like um, uh, I think uh, if I'm just gonna write sand uh, I think it's it's hand not 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 hand I'm it's like sandpaper oh yeah sorry actually it was a brush so I'm gonna go in here and just select like brushes we can see that we have like the sandpaper which is really good for this so um we can just get in here and so we are painting the layer so we are sort of uh, uh, enhancing we are we are uh, adding another layer so what this is is it just added to that layer below so we're gonna be able to uh, for example sort of uh, brush this guy a little bit more so then you can also use X to either reveal or hide. So if I paint it too much, I can just hit X to get this brush uh, inverted. So now uh, I'm actually hiding and then I can again hit X and, and do some more. So it's really, uh, something like that might actually work that something has brushed uh, on the edge of this uh, console and then uh, something like that. So that's something that I did and 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 just went in here and, and hide uh, that uh, sort of a automatic uh, procedural type of a result. So then what I did was I created these keycaps in here and this is another base material which I defined here. So I just defined some uh, color, roughness and metal here. So this is again really nice way because we're going to be able to adjust this later. We are not, uh, uh, we haven't painted any uh, unique uh, values. We are just uh, defining one uh, material and then masking that so that's the idea that um, yeah so um, we have then we have this mask and how I did this was actually I uh, used this um, um, polygon fill which is really good that uh, with this we can uh, select like some of the areas of the mesh which are unique which are uh, not connected to the other ones so we can um, here we can set the color so if we want to like uh, reveal uh, let's say that I want one of the caps to be uh, not included. I can just uh, do that and then select this uh, this uh, uh, sort of a mesh fill, which uh, fills one uh, connected mesh part. So I can do like that. So now we are uh, we have actually this um, uh, uh, symmetry. So I'm just going to turn that off. So so yeah, you can actually go. You could come in here and then fill like uh, some of these, and then if we want to to uh, put uh, put them into the mask you can just uh, drag the drag this guy to the uh, right so like that so I think yeah this this is really really easy way to define the base material for those keys and then I did a uh, one uh, couple of keys that are different colors so again doing the same same thing using the uh, really nice mesh fill uh, option here and then what I did was that I created the characters and also the characters rather than just painting them I just created this uh, base material and then I mask that so that in that way if I want to change the color of those marks I'm going to be able to to do that in here so I'm going to be able to to change that to whatever I like uh, it's really uh, uh, handy and again uh, I just uh, created some uh, marks uh, some sort of alpha stamps in in Photoshop and then uh, in, in imported them here so it's uh, again pretty easy nothing really that special and then um, the screen again created a new uh, material here and um, then uh, mask that so that the, the screen uh, area is is uh, now masked like that and then I even went on and created some fingerprints to the roughness channel so um, so you can kind of see that something someone has like touched that we have the really nice alphas here for those uh, we can go in here and like do this if you're right hand we can see you have like a bunch of those which is just super cool so you got like a, someone has um, and, and you don't necessarily obviously see these details uh, right at the first look but then if you if the if this is in a game engine for example and then players just walk around and look and then someone knows oh like you have like this sort of details which is can be really nice so that they are not too much uh, always on on your face but they are sort of in there and they can add a, a lot of realism this uh, roughness details so again uh, something that I put in the roughness channel and uh, yeah then I have actually um, this one and this is a emissive um, <coughs> emissive material which is just a 
something that I did so basically I defined here uh, emissive material which is just um, emissive uniform color and again I'm freely able to change this color later on so so it's really really nice way that again we are not uh, everything is non-destructive for us so so I did this and and we can actually uh, if you hit uh, alt and you can actually preview this uh, uh, mask so uh, it's just a really simple uh, simple mask like that and I'm just gonna hit M to get back and then I have the LEDs which is also the same uh, same method for some reason it seems that these are not like super bright so maybe something like that might work so I'm gonna get in here again and and see that yeah we have like we have just a bunch of them and um, yeah so uh, again em emissive material so if you don't have that channel here you can go and uh, you have to add it later so you have these channels and you can add different things that are not necessarily included in your project so you have like opacity and and reflection and transmissive and uh, all these things that are not uh, you can add them later so the emissive, emissive uh, things or something that I added here and then after that it's uh, available in your channels and you're going to be able to export that as well so yes um, uh, we have um, also we have like this um, another one in here which is um, I created actually the way this effect works is that I created this blur in here so that uh, this is one of the filters that we can add later so uh, I'm not sure why I create it another layer because I could also just go in here and add this filter in here so we have like the filters and and what these are these are sort of effects that uh, are enhancing those uh, masks that we have created so so in this case this this uh, blur is just uh, it's getting this nice shine all over it so so it looks like this area around here is also lit and actually it is lit so that uh, this um, this sort of uh, reflection here is contributing to our emissive uh, layer so uh, yeah it works in, in if, if this room is completely dark we can see that also this area around here is lit which looks pretty nice and realistic so yeah just something to keep in mind so then I have these decal texts uh, things and these are also just something that I used uh, the alphas that are here and I created a bunch of my own alphas as well to for example the Nakajima logo here and also these text parts um, so um yeah i just uh, imported the alphas here and i have like a bunch of them in here and i created one layer to them and and they are just uh basically basically in there um let's see so yeah here actually this one and and then what i did i created some more dirt so uh what this one is is uh again uh its own uh, material and then uh, i have a uh, this generated MG dirt, which is one of the default generators in Substance Painter. So, so we have like a bunch of values we can set in here, the dirt level, and and we're going to be able to adjust things like that in here. And then um, you, again, I'm referencing uh, these micro details. So in this case, I'm again doing micro normal details, and and then I'm uh, referencing referencing this anchor which we created um, here. So again. Uh, using this is going to be we're going to be able to to make sure that uh, substance painter takes it account that uh, those uh, details that we created later so yes and uh, then i have like a bunch more here we have another another one in here like uh, panel lines so i have an own dirt for the panel lines so um i'm just gonna undo what i did so uh, we're gonna be able to get back to that so yeah um something like that and then i have another one in here which is uh, i think this one was um let's see so i think this is something that i actually probably painted something uh, in by by just using uh, the paint and then i have also these leaks and this is something that uh, was just uh, i wanted to actually just try one of these particle brushes because we have this nice uh, uh this is actually some of the feature which was really uh really sort of uh, a lot of people were so excited about it when substance painter first came out this uh, we have these particle brushes in here um I'm just gonna uh we have like uh, particles in here and we have this for example this leak so this is really cool because it, this is like a sort of a physical uh, particle based uh system where you're gonna be able to 
sort of do something like that that uh, you know there are particles which flow the surface flow on the surface of your model and they also take account uh, any normal de details what to have created so um, so I'm gonna be able to do something like that and and makes like something has maybe uh, some kind of material has a uh, uh, leaked from there like to do things like that it's, it's just something that I wanted to put in there and just uh, add a little detail and then we have this dirt uh, I think I'm not sure what was this um, this was actually um, yeah so this was actually uh, on dirt which I just created on top of then everything else so here we have another dirt uh, generator and I also uh, did uh, some hand painted uh, details. I, I think I used some stencils. So um, if you um, shift right click, you're gonna be able to move the light. So this is something that uh, that adds a little bit uh, sort of a depth to, to this. So uh, it adds quite a lot uh, actually. So it's just the possibilities are so huge here in Subspader. We're gonna be able to do all kinds of things and also we can create our own generators. So we, if we go in here and for example, um, add a generator and we can uh, go like we have these uh, edge, uh, I think that was called um, mask, uh, mask editor. So here we are gonna be able to create your own uh, masks. So you're gonna be able like uh, just uh, create basically your own mask generator which for example something that is um, affecting uh, your ambient occlusion so so from ambient occlusion it's uh, sort of a uh, defining some areas uh, from uh, from that or the curvature and also you're going to be able to use things like uh, a triplanar projection which uh, sort of uh, projects over the uv islands so you don't need to worry about uv seams because just by using this we are able to avoid uh, the seams so so this is it i hope you enjoyed this little material breakdown on this sci-fi console thing here in substance painter a lot of people have asked me uh, to do more substance painter videos and i hope that i'm going to be able to do that so substance painter is such a cool uh, program and i really understand why uh, game studios and big production houses are moving their texture uh, production into in the substance because you know we're going to be able to to get uh, those materials from substance designer and then bring them here and and then do all kinds of uh, stuff that isn't uh, possible in any other application so uh, absolutely that the, the reason that if you are uh, artists who want to get into game production or who want to get to, into some kind of model production not necessarily only for games but also for things that uh, require like a sort of a modern texture production yeah definitely substance painter is something that it's good to take a look so yeah um, i hope you enjoyed please subscribe and um, i hope to see you soon if you like this video just uh, click the like button if you dislike just uh, you can use the other button as well it works just fine so yeah uh it was nice to see you guys and uh i hope to see you in the uh, next video this was Jakko. Uh, bye bye